Alexis Janice, believe it or not, this crook walked out with a giant Snoop Dogg bobblehead, but it seems he had a change of heart once he saw his face splattered all over the news. Drama meets chaos when a man tries to rob an isolated store in Texas. But what happened next left everyone in so much shock that they will not be able to recover from it. Snoop Dogg walked right into the scene when no one expected it, catching the thief off guard and giving him the biggest regret of his life. The hum of daytime life in Texas had given way to a strange stillness. Streets that were once bustling with activity now lay deserted, cloaked in darkness under the dim glow of streetlights. Amid this solitude, a lone gas station illuminated like a beacon, its fluorescent lights cutting through the shadows. The store appeared abandoned from the outside, but inside, Martha, a weary cashier, sat behind the counter, sorting through the day's sales. Martha had worked the night shift for years and was no stranger to the loneliness it brought. Yet something about this particular night felt different, as though the air itself was charged with unease. She brushed off her instincts, chalked it up to exhaustion, and focused on her work. Then came the sound of footsteps, faint at first, barely audible over the soft hum of the lights, but they grew louder and sharper until they seemed to echo through the store. Martha's heart quickened. She looked up as the glass door creaked open, its familiar jingle breaking the silence. A young man entered, his hoodie pulled low over his face, casting deep shadows. Earlier, Martha had noticed him parked across the street, sitting in a car tucked away in the darkness. She'd thought little of it at the time, but now, as he stood in her store, his jerky movements and the air of hesitation around him sent a chill down her spine. The man shuffled toward the counter, his head down, avoiding her gaze. Martha tried to steady herself. Perhaps he was just nervous and there for a harmless reason, she thought. But as he approached, he revealed an old, rusty gun that trembled in his unsteady hands. He demanded the cash, his voice quiet and uncertain, the sound barely louder than the hum of the store lights. Martha froze as her mind tried to grasp the situation. The young man before her didn't look like a hardened criminal. He looked terrified. His hands shook so violently that Martha worried he might drop the gun, or worse, accidentally fire it. He couldn't have been older than twenty, his youthful face betraying a mix of fear and desperation. Martha's instinct was to pity him, but the cold reality of the situation demanded her focus. A gun was still a gun. She couldn't take any chances. Slowly, deliberately, she opened the cash register. Her fingers trembled as she pulled out a handful of bills and handed them over. The young man snatched the money clumsily and hesitated momentarily as though he wanted to say something. Instead, he turned toward the door. Then, the door swung open just as he reached for the handle. The bell chimed again, its cheerful jingle cutting through the thick tension like a knife. Both Martha and the man froze, their heads snapping toward the entrance. Standing in the doorway, silhouetted against the harsh light of the store, was a figure neither of them expected to see. Draped in a casual outfit that somehow exudes effortless cool, his braids hanging neatly stood none other than Snoop Dogg. Yes, that Snoop Dogg, the iconic rapper, actor, and cultural legend, had just entered the store. The young man's eyes widened in shock, and his grip on the gun faltered. Even Martha, who had seen her share of strange things during the night shift, couldn't believe what she saw. Snoop Dogg moved into the store with a calm, confident stride, his demeanor so relaxed it seemed to instantly diffuse the tension in the room. He looked between Martha and the young man, his eyes sharp and observant. The atmosphere in the room shifted. It was as though Snoop Dogg had brought a wave of calm with him, yet there was an unmistakable authority in his presence, Dot. The young man took a step back, unsure of himself. His fear and desperation began to mix with something else. Regret. Snoop Dogg didn't immediately speak. Instead, his steady gaze remained fixed on the young man, who seemed to shrink under his scrutiny. What happened next would change everything, but for now, the room hung in suspended silence, the weight of the moment pressing down on everyone inside. It was easy to wonder how Snoop Dogg was in such a messy situation. Still, the answer was as intriguing as the event itself. He had been returning from a late-night concert in Texas, 
cruising down a lonely road when his gas gauge signaled that he was running low. Spotting the dimly lit fuel station up ahead, he pulled in, hoping to refuel and grab a quick snack before continuing his journey. As he approached the station, though, something unusual caught his eye. He noticed a scene that didn't sit right through the transparent glass door. There was a kind of tension that was hard to miss. Most people might have hesitated or driven away, but Snoop Dogg wasn't most people. Known for his bold and assertive nature, he didn't think twice. Ignoring every reason to protect himself from danger, he decided to step inside and see what was going on. Inside, the atmosphere was thick with unease. Behind the counter stood Martha, the cashier, frozen in fear. Her wide, terrified eyes darted between the young man before her and the door Snoop Dogg had just walked through. In front of her stood a visibly nervous young man, holding an old, rusty gun in one hand and a bag of cash in the other. He was trembling, his knuckles white as he gripped the weapon, and his face was pale with panic. Snoop Dogg took in the scene quickly, piecing together what was happening. But the longer he observed the young man, the more something stood out. This wasn't a hardened criminal reveling in the thrill of the act. Instead, Snoop Dogg saw a desperate young man who seemed to have reached the end of his rope. The boy's youth was impossible to ignore. He looked barely 20, not much more than a kid. Snoop Dogg, who had always been passionate about empowering young people, felt an instant pang of empathy. He didn't see a dangerous thief. He saw a lost soul needing help. Without hesitation, Snoop Dogg stepped forward, his calm demeanor cutting through the thick tension in the room. He didn't raise his voice or make any sudden moves. Instead, he spoke gently, addressing the young man directly. He urged him to calm down, saying there was no need for violence and that there was another way to handle things. The young man visibly hesitated, lowering his gun slightly as Snoop Dogg's words sank in. He looked at Snoop for a moment, his tough exterior cracking to reveal the fear and regret underneath. Slowly, he put the cash bag back on the counter and let the gun hang loosely in his hand. His shoulders sagged, and he lowered his head in shame. Relieved but still cautious, Snoop Dogg stepped closer and asked the young man his name. The boy, barely above a whisper, admitted that his name was Jerome. Martha, silently watching the interaction, finally seemed to exhale. The fear in her face softened, replaced by curiosity and a flicker of relief. It was late, but Snoop Dogg didn't seem to mind taking the time to understand what had driven Jerome to such a desperate act. Both Snoop Dogg and Martha were thinking the same thing. Jerome didn't fit the profile of a robber. Why had he done this? When Snoop Dogg gently asked him what had happened, Jerome began to speak, his voice trembling as he revealed the story that had brought him to this breaking point. When Jerome finally spoke up, it took everyone by surprise. Every word he said seemed to make them finally see who he really was. It quickly became clear that Jerome was far from a hardened thief. He began explaining, his voice cracking with emotion, that he was just a college student struggling to make ends meet. Life had taken a cruel turn when his parents died tragically in a car crash, leaving him and his little sister alone in the world. Jerome shared how he had tried his best to keep things together. He'd stayed in school, determined to build a better future while caring for his sister. But the challenges were overwhelming. Financial pressures had mounted, and Jeremy was now on the verge of dropping out of college. Yet that wasn't even the worst of it. His sister was seriously ill, battling a condition that required urgent medical care. Jerome's voice wavered as he described how he had spent sleepless nights watching her suffer, knowing that her life depended on treatments he simply couldn't afford. Their parents had always raised them to look out for each other, and Jeremy couldn't bear the thought of losing the only family he had left. He said he felt trapped, desperate, and out of options. As he finished, Jerome broke down, tears streaming down his face. He apologized profusely for what he had done, admitting that he had no intention of hurting anyone and that his actions were driven purely by desperation. At that moment, even Martha, terrified just minutes earlier, softened. It was impossible not to feel for him. Snoop Dogg stood there, listening intently, his usual swagger replaced with quiet empathy. He looked at Jerome not with judgment, 
but with understanding. This wasn't a crime story to Snoop Dogg. It was a cry for help. He placed a reassuring hand on Jerome's shoulder and told him to calm down. He assured the young man that things would get better, and most importantly, promised that his sister would not die. Jerome's tear-streaked face lifted, and hope shone in his eyes. Snoop Dogg's words had hit home, giving him a sense of comfort he hadn't felt in a long time. But Snoop Dogg wasn't done yet. In his calm, confident way, he told Jerome they should see his sister immediately. Jerome was stunned. He had never experienced this kind of kindness before, especially not from someone as famous as Snoop Dogg. Just moments ago, he had believed his life was falling apart, and now here was someone offering to help him in ways he hadn't dared to dream of. Without hesitation, the two of them made their way to the hospital. Despite being exhausted after his concert, Snoop Dogg didn't seem to care about losing sleep. All that mattered to him was helping this young man and his sister. Snoop quietly went to the hospital's billing desk when they arrived and settled everything. Watching the relief wash over Jerome's face was a moment that would stick with Snoop for a long time. Jerome couldn't stop thanking him. He looked at Snoop Dogg with gratitude and disbelief, as if he couldn't quite process what was happening. But Snoop Dogg, ever humble, told him that he was the one who deserved thanks for not letting the darkness completely take over his heart. Before leaving, Snoop Dogg handed Jerome his card and told him to get in touch. He said they needed to talk about ways to turn this situation around for Jerome and others like him. Snoop Dogg shared his vision for an upcoming youth empowerment initiative, a program designed to give young people the skills and support they need to break free from financial struggles. As for Jerome, Snoop Dogg didn't hesitate to offer him a role in the initiative. He told him that his story and strength would make him a valuable part of the team. It's you and me against the world now, Snoop Dogg said with a smile before walking away. Jerome stood there, holding the card tightly in his hand, feeling a surge of hope he had never experienced. For the first time in a long while, he truly believed everything would be okay. Jesse Waters and Faulkner, their approach to journalism. Jesse Waters' rise in Fox News came through his controversial and often satirical segments, particularly on The O'Reilly Factor, where he started as a correspondent. He gained attention for his man-on-the-street interviews, which were known for being provocative, sometimes crossing into offensive territory. One of his most widespread early segments, which sparked a lot of backlash, was his 2016 Chinatown interview. Fox News correspondent Jesse Waters is being blasted for a segment that aired on The O'Reilly Factor that some are calling racist. The video was filmed in New York City's Chinatown that some say contained offensive Asian stereotypes. In this segment, Waters conducted stereotypical and insensitive interviews with Chinese Americans, which critics slammed as racially insensitive. However, his love affair with controversy continued even after moving on from The O'Reilly Factor. His show, Waters World, followed the same formula of humor mixed with political commentary, often targeting liberals, the media, and public figures. Some of his most divisive comments have included sharp criticisms of figures like Dr. Anthony Fauci during the COVID-19 pandemic, where Waters accused Fauci of misleading the public. His remarks about Vice President Kamala Harris have also sparked heated debates, as he often questioned her qualifications and painted her in an unflattering light. Such stances have divided audiences, with some praising Waters for his bluntness, while others condemned him for pushing boundaries too far. Well, she's getting ready for the debate, and we hear she's cramming, because she's never done a presidential debate, and she's nervous, and it has to go well, because if it doesn't go well, her whole momentum is shot. As a co-host on The Five and the host of his own primetime show, Waters has built his brand around a combination of satire and pointed political commentary. On The Five, Waters often plays the provocateur, delivering sarcastic or exaggerated takes on the day's top stories. His style is unapologetically confrontational, and his approach is designed to stir strong reactions, whether laughter, agreement, or outrage. In his primetime show, Jesse Waters' primetime, this formula continues, as Waters blends humor with his right-wing political views. His show often includes humorous segments, mock interviews, and satirical takes on liberal policies or democratic figures. 
Stay tuned, because the best part is yet to come. In contrast to Waters' satirical and often combative approach, Harris Faulkner is known for her calm, measured, and balanced reporting. With a career spanning over two decades, Faulkner has established herself as one of Fox News' most respected journalists. Her ability to maintain her composure, even in heated moments, has earned her a reputation for journalistic integrity and professionalism. Her Peabody Award is perhaps the biggest proof of her commitment to balanced and impactful reporting, a quality that sets her apart from many of her colleagues. Her approach focuses on delivering the news without sensationalism, offering viewers a thoughtful and reliable perspective. During times of political and social crisis, such as the 2020 presidential election, the racial justice protests following the death of George Floyd. So the top 12 of 2020 is down to the top four. And this morning we're revisiting the protests that erupted after the death of George Floyd. And the COVID-19 pandemic, Faulkner's coverage was a steadying force. Her emphasis on the facts and her refusal to engage in sensationalism have earned her widespread respect not only within Fox News, but also across the broader media landscape, and has made her a trusted voice for millions of viewers. Harris Faulkner plays a central role in Fox News daytime programming, particularly with her show, The Faulkner Focus. The program, which launched in 2021, provides in-depth analysis of the day's top stories with a focus on fact-driven content. Unlike the more personality-driven shows on Fox's primetime lineup, the Faulkner focus is centered on news and analysis, with Faulkner often conducting tough, straightforward interviews with key political figures. Her balanced approach has earned her a diverse viewership, including those who appreciate her thoughtful takes on contentious issues. Before the Faulkner focus, Faulkner gained prominence as the co-host of Outnumbered, a panel show where she moderated discussions on various political and social issues. While Outnumbered often featured lively debates, Faulkner maintained a measured tone, offering nuanced perspectives that contrasted with more partisan commentary from other panelists. Her ability to ask tough but fair questions and handle tense moments with professionalism is a stark contrast to Waters' more relaxed and sometimes combative style. There's still so much more we have to cover about these two hosts in this video. Stay tuned. Major issues they've tackled together and separately. The 2020 U.S. presidential election was one of the most controversial in recent history, and it served as a clear example of how Faulkner and Waters differed in their commentary. Waters was vocal about allegations of voter fraud, echoing sentiments from then-President Donald Trump and other conservatives who believed that the election was stolen. On his shows, Waters frequently aired claims about election integrity, sometimes without substantial evidence, and his tone leaned toward reinforcing conspiracy theories about widespread fraud. It's election day in an off year, but there's a lot of action on the local level, plus it gives them a dry run when no one's watching for the presidential. Are you confident the election is going to be safe and secure? Which resonated with a segment of Fox News audience. In contrast, Faulkner took a more balanced approach. While she allowed discussions on voter fraud to take place on her show, the Faulkner Focus. She often refrained from endorsing the claims outright. Instead, Faulkner focused on providing viewers with a comprehensive view of the election process, including interviews with election officials and legal experts who could explain the lack of substantial evidence supporting the fraud claims. Faulkner's reporting during the election emphasized the importance of upholding the integrity of the electoral process without resorting to exaggeration. This made her a more reliable voice for viewers seeking fact-based coverage. Another case where Faulkner and Waters took noticeably different stances was the racial justice protests that erupted in 2020 after the killing of George Floyd. As one of the few prominent black women at Fox News, Faulkner brought a unique and critical perspective to the discussion. During the height of the protests, Faulkner provided thoughtful commentary on race relations in America the systemic challenges facing black communities, and the need for police reform. Her tone was measured, empathetic, and focused on fostering understanding. In one memorable on-air moment, Faulkner had a candid interview with former President Donald Trump, where she asked tough questions about race and justice in the U.S. waters. On the other hand, 
approached the protests from a more conservative angle. His commentary on The Five and his own show frequently centered around law and order, often framing the protests as violent and disruptive. He was more likely to emphasize the negative aspects of the protests, such as instances of looting or rioting, rather than focus on the broader call for racial justice. This approach appealed to his base, but drew criticism from those who felt his coverage lacked nuance and dismissed the legitimate concerns of protesters. And there's still more. The Broadway community unites in protest for racial justice and equity. Actresses, costume designers, stage managers and more rallied with Unite New York. Another instance was during the calls for police reform. Police reform became a major topic of discussion following the George Floyd protests, with calls for changes in policing practices gaining momentum nationwide. Faulkner, given her background and the significant platform she holds, often highlighted the need for thoughtful reform. She acknowledged the need for both accountability within police forces and the challenges law enforcement faces, but her tone was consistently one of balance. Faulkner was able to engage in the debate about police reform without alienating either side, providing a space for genuine dialogue on her shows. Waters, in contrast, consistently leaned into a more hardline stance. On The Five, Waters repeatedly stressed the importance of maintaining law and order, often dismissing the calls for defunding or reforming the police as overreactions. His segments focused on the risks of weakening law enforcement capabilities, arguing that such moves would lead to more chaos in American cities. The January 6, 2021, Capitol insurrection presented another stark contrast between Faulkner's and Waters' coverage. While Waters played down the severity of the events in the weeks following the insurrection, focusing on issues such as free speech and defending Trump supporters, Faulkner's tone was more serious. She approached the subject with the gravity it warranted, reporting on the attack as a serious threat to democracy and emphasizing the importance of holding those responsible accountable. Faulkner's fact-based approach allowed her to engage in difficult conversations about the implications of the January 6th attack without resorting to exaggerations or dismissiveness. Waters, in contrast, faced criticism for his comments, which many saw as downplaying the seriousness of the event, a reflection of his tendency to lean into divisive and partisan takes. Despite their differing perspectives, Faulkner and Waters have had numerous on-air interactions, particularly on The Five, where they've engaged in lively debates. Their ability to navigate disagreements while maintaining professionalism shows their individual strengths as broadcasters. Never before had a U.S. president refused to admit defeat. Never before had a president alleged the election was stolen. On The Five, Faulkner and Waters have had numerous opportunities to clash over political and social issues. While Waters frequently takes the more controversial or partisan position, Faulkner counters with fact-based arguments. However, even in the heat of debate, both Faulkner and Waters have managed to maintain respect for one another's viewpoints often agreeing to disagree by the end of a segment. Their ability to balance professionalism and disagreement showcases their on-air chemistry. Faulkner's composed demeanor often acts as a balance to Waters more provocative statements, making their debates engaging for viewers without devolving into personal attacks. While Faulkner and Waters often tackle issues from different angles, there have been moments of collaboration, particularly during Fox News coverage of major national events. During election coverage or breaking news situations, their on-air interactions have shown their ability to work together, even when they may hold opposing views. One example is their coverage of the 2020 presidential election, where Faulkner anchored Fox News daytime programming, providing steady updates, while Waters contributed his perspective during evening segments. But what could the future hold for them? Stay tuned to find out. Future Directions for Waters and Faulkner Harris Faulkner's career trajectory looks poised for continued success, whether she remains at Fox News or ventures into new opportunities. Faulkner has built a reputation for balanced and credible journalism, something that sets her apart from many of her peers at Fox, who are often more associated with partisan commentary. Given her widespread respect and ability to connect with diverse audiences, 
It is not unreasonable to speculate that Faulkner might expand her role within Fox or even transition to other major media outlets. There are several potential career avenues Faulkner could explore. Firstly, she could take on an expanded role at Fox News, potentially anchoring more high-profile shows or even leading major election coverage as a principal host. Faulkner's credibility in tackling complex topics such as racial justice and political affairs gives her the range to handle more weighty news segments. Her ability to navigate delicate topics like these, especially in an increasingly divided political climate, could make her a top choice for significant long-form interviews and investigations. Um, from the initial chemical explosion, uh, explosion to the water being contaminated, the contamination in the air, you could smell it, you could taste it, people breaking out in rashes. Alternatively, Faulkner could consider a future beyond Fox. With her journalistic credentials and experience, it is conceivable that she could move to other major networks or pursue opportunities in media ownership, perhaps creating her own production company focused on delivering balanced and in-depth news coverage. Faulkner's role as a trailblazer, one of the few prominent African-American women at Fox, also positions her as a figure of influence in the media world. This visibility could open doors for roles beyond television, including writing books or speaking engagements centered on her experiences in the media and her views on race and journalism. Regardless of the path she takes, Faulkner's careful approach to journalism suggests that she will continue to be a respected figure, capable of adapting to the changing needs of the industry while maintaining her core commitment to fair and balanced reporting. Jesse Waters, on the other hand, has built a career on a more confrontational and provocative style. His ability to court controversy while maintaining a significant following among Fox's conservative base gives him a strong foothold within the network, yet it also leaves him vulnerable to potential backlash or consequences for crossing lines. Waters' future within Fox seems bright for now, especially given the success of his primetime show, Jesse Waters' Primetime. With his show consistently drawing high ratings, Fox may continue to support and elevate his career. However, Waters' reliance on controversy to maintain his presence in the media could be a double-edged sword. While his edgy commentary has earned him a loyal fan base, it has also led to criticism and calls for consequences when his remarks are deemed offensive or inappropriate. If he continues down this path, Waters may face increased scrutiny from both his audience and his network. There is also the possibility that Waters could face internal consequences at Fox should his controversial statements cross a line that the network can no longer ignore. Given the current media landscape, where public backlash on social media can spark corporate reactions, Waters' future success will likely depend on how well he manages to balance his edgy style without alienating sponsors or the network itself. However, his track record suggests that even if controversy surrounds him, it only increases his popularity among his target audience. Waters could also potentially explore other media ventures if Fox ever becomes too restrictive for his approach. The media is treating Kamala like she's vulnerable and needs protection, because she does. She's on a tight leash. They make her read the same speech twice in a row. He could follow in the footsteps of other conservative commentators, moving toward independent platforms such as podcasts or digital media channels, where he would have more freedom to express his views without the constraints of network oversight. Fox News itself is evolving, and this changing environment will influence the future roles of both Harris Faulkner and Jesse Waters. As the media landscape shifts in response to technological advances, changing viewer preferences, and broader social trends, Fox has had to adapt in order to remain competitive while also maintaining its identity as a leading conservative news outlet. One of the most notable changes at Fox News is its balancing act between traditional journalism and opinion-driven commentary. Figures like Harris Faulkner represent the journalistic side of the network, where fact-based reporting and professional delivery appeal to viewers who seek reliable news coverage. On the other hand, Jesse Waters embodies the opinion-driven commentary that has become synonymous with Fox's primetime lineup. His bold takes and humorous segments cater to an audience seeking more entertainment and punditry than hard news. As Fox News continues to evolve, it may find itself needing to navigate this balance more carefully. 
the network's future could involve further segmentation of its audience, with certain shows catering more heavily to hard news, while others, like Waters' program, lean into the kind of opinion-based content that draws a more passionate, engaged audience. If this segmentation becomes more pronounced, Faulkner and Waters could play even more distinct roles within the network, each appealing to different subsets of the Fox News viewer base. The rise of digital platforms and social media also plays a significant role in shaping the future of Fox News. As Fox continues to grapple with the digital landscape, it is likely that personalities like Faulkner and Waters will remain key players, but their methods of engagement will need to adapt. The network may lean more heavily on personalities like Waters for generating social media buzz and attracting younger, digitally savvy viewers. Meanwhile, Faulkner's steady, fact-based journalism will remain important for maintaining credibility and trust among more traditional viewers. Do you think Faulkner will continue to stay at Fox News? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more. Also, click the next video showing on your screen. You will enjoy it.